Hello and welcome back to our channel. From Paul George's crazy windmill against the Clippers to LeBron James's unreal poster over Jason Terry, the NBA has seen some sick dunks over the years, with some being even more memorable than the rest. Welcome to Hooper, and in this video we'll talk about the top 10 most insane dunks in NBA history. One of the best things about basketball is the fact that there are so many different ways to score, and even though most shots are worth two points, what matters is how you get those two points. After all, fans don't want to be treated as snooze fests. They want to be entertained from start to finish. And that's where the dunks come in. But not just simple rim grazers. I'm talking windmills, 360s, reverse slams, and the list goes on. Sure, you can play it safe by taking a ton of layups and free throws. But if a player really wants to show off his skills and become a fan favorite, then he needs to have some thunderous dunks in his arsenal. Sort of like PG's unbelievable windmill dunk back in 2014. It was just another regular season game between Indiana and the Clippers, but with a little under six minutes left in the fourth, George stole the ball, quickly ran up the court, and soared high for a 360 windmill dunk, leaving everyone in attendance awestruck. As if the dunk wasn't disrespectful enough, he went for it when the Pacers were already up by 20 points, so I'm sure the Clippers were fuming. Talk about rubbing salt in their wounds. But hey, as disrespectful as this dunk was, at least the Clippers couldn't say that none of their players got posterized, which is something that Chris Dudley can't relate to. I mean, Shaq absolutely humiliated him. Once the Big Diesel made his way to the Lakers, he was making crazy plays on a nightly basis. But the one that takes the cake is his insane dunk on Dudley. LA was hosting the Knicks in the 1999 regular season, and after catching the ball in the post, Shaq went to work. First he backed down Chris, and then turned around before jumping up for the vicious two-handed slam on Dudley's head. To make matters worse for Chris, O'Neal pushed him straight to the floor right after he landed, which only made the crowd go even more ballistic. Dudley was so pissed that he threw the ball at the big diesel, but Shaq didn't give a damn. Here's Shaq. Against Dudley. Nice. O'Neal showed no regard for Dudley, just like Dwayne Wade didn't show any regard for Anderson Verajao. D. Wade was a certified menace during his prime, and his insane dunk over Verajao in 2009 is proof of that. The game already had a big match feel to it because it was a clash between Braun and Wade. And the flash kicked things up a notch with a little under four minutes left in the first quarter after King James missed his dunk attempt. D-Wade grabbed the rebound, ran up the court, and drove straight to the paint. The three-time champ had his work cut out for him as the 6'11", Anderson Verajao was waiting for him at the rim, but Dwayne was unfazed and jumped high before slamming the ball home. Well, this is a reversal of fortune. First, LeBron James tries to test Jermaine O'Neal and gets it sent back, and Dwayne Wade right at the body of Anderson Verajao. Wade was so aggressive with the dunk that the big man went crashing down. And if that wasn't bad enough, the flash stepped over his downed opponent right after. The cherry on top was the fact that Michael Jordan was in attendance and he was as amazed as everyone else. But get this, the three-time champ has another insane poster to his name. And this time he made a mockery out of Kendrick Perkins. The Big Three era in Miami was unforgettable, and plays like this were a massive reason why. After Wade caught the ball at the left wing, he took two dribbles before hitting his defender with one of the smoothest spin moves ever, and finished the play with a thunderous two-handed slam over Kendrick, not to mention Perk's a giant, just like Varajal. So it doesn't make sense how the Flash made it look so effortless. But D-Wade isn't the only two guard who got mad dunking skills. After all, Kobe's dunk against the Nuggets in 2003 was unbelievable. LA was dismantling Denver all game long, as they were already up by 21 points. But then the Black Mamba added insult to injury. Robert Horry came in clutch with the outlet pass, which Kobe caught with ease. And then Bryant took one dribble before going behind his back and jumping up for the reverse slam. And to top it all off, he posterized the living hell out of Vincent Yarbrough, whose claim to fame is being the man Kobe dunked all over. 
Bryant blew the roof off the arena with this insane dunk, which is a feeling that Aaron Gordon's used to. Cause his dunk against the Suns made the NBA world go wild. Denver and Phoenix were going at each other in December of 2022, and with less than 30 seconds left in overtime, Aaron kicked things into second gear. He sprinted up the court and went up to hammer the ball home for a crucial two points. Delivering one of the most insane posters in NBA history on Landry Shamit's head. In fact, AG dunked the ball so hard that he fell on top of Shamit. Fans in attendance couldn't stop screaming in excitement, especially because it put the Nuggets up by three with just 20 seconds left. Talk about having the clutch gene. Though impressive as it was, Andrew Wiggins' poster from the 2022 playoffs was even crazier. Golden State was clinging on to an eight-point lead in the fourth, and Dallas was focused on protecting home court. But Maple Jordan had other plans. He blew past Reggie Bullock easily and soared as high as he could before slamming that ball home with authority. And unlike most other posters, Wiggins dunked on one of the NBA's biggest superstars, Luka Doncic. Not only did he shatter the morale of the entire Mavs squad, but he broke the hearts of every Dallas fan who was watching the game. Though T-Mac has Wiggins beat in terms of wow factor because his ferocious dunk from the 2005 playoffs was jaw-dropping. Funnily enough, the Mavs were on the receiving end of this slam dunk as well. And the man who got posterized was the 7'6 giant, Sean Bradley. Yeah, McGrady dunked over a guy that tall. Isn't that just ridiculous? Not just that but Tracy yammed the ball with so much power and then let out a loud roar. And Kevin Harlan yelled, he just sucked the gravity right out of the building. So that says a lot. Here comes McCready. Oh, he just sucked the gravity right out of the building. What a play by T-Man. How about the passion? Look at the... And even though it was a road game for the Rockets, the crowd couldn't hide their amazement. The same goes for DeAndre Jordan's monstrous alley-oop slam. When the Clippers faced off against the Pistons in the 2013 season, DJ unleashed the animal within him. With a little over four and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter, Chris Paul bought the ball up the court and ran his signature play, the lob pass to Jordan. But this time it resulted in one of the most insane posters in NBA history. DeAndre went to catch the ball and sure enough, he hammered it home so hard that Brandon Knight went crashing down. On top of that, DJ stepped over Nike, which only made the dunk even more memorable. That said, nothing compares to the time King James baptized Jason Terry. In March of 2013, Miami was up against their arch rivals, the Celtics, and LeBron was on a mission to humiliate them. With around five minutes left in the second quarter, Wade got the steal and passed it to Mario Commerce, who dished it to Norris Cole. But rather than taking the easy layup, Cole lobbed it to James, who soared high to complete the dunk. He posterized Jason Terry so hard that he looked like a dead man for a second. And if that wasn't cold-blooded enough, King James stared down the point guard before turning away. As you can see, dunks are one of the most exciting aspects of the game, because not only do they get the fans pumped, but they play a massive role in helping players cement themselves as certified beasts. On top of that, they're one of the best ways for teams to gain momentum and uplift the squad's morale, which is something that even three-pointers fail to do at times. So making a monstrous dunk at the right time might be the difference maker in close games. And that's something both Aaron Gordon and Maple Jordan would agree with. On that note, we'll wrap up today's video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to Hooper, because there'll be more awesome videos coming every day.